The second basic shape we're going to discuss is the cylinder. Now when you draw a cylinder, it's very simple in that you draw two vertical lines that are parallel to each other. Now, depending on where your horizon line is, the top will be different. If your horizon line, which we define that as your eye level, okay, but it's right there, and that's the top, then all you would see would be a straight line going across. That's all you would see. You wouldn't see any curve to it. Let's say that the horizon line is a little taller, a little higher, rather. We're going to put it up here. And the top of the can would be about here. So what you want to do is draw a line straight across at right angles to the side. Okay. Now, if this is the top of your can, we're below the horizon line, so we're going to be able to see the top. And so the easiest way to do this is to measure across. This is about seven and a half inches. So that'd be three and three quarters to the midpoint. So that's why that's the center of the can. And so I'm going to measure from that point up about a quarter of an inch and down about a quarter of an inch. And that's going to be what I can see. So if I were to take my black marker again, I'm going to come from the corner and come right straight through that point. And also from the corners and come through that bottom point. And when you're doing this with a pencil, you simply sketch very light and do a couple of lines until you get it down. And then once you figure out where it looks the best, then you can darken it in. Now, as we get further down, this space gets larger because you can see more and more and more of the top. If we were looking at the, at the can and it was above the horizon line, all you would see would be the front edge. So you see a, a curve this way, but that's all you would see. Now as I get down to the bottom, because we're getting further and further from the horizon line, you're going to see more of it. So if this was a, uh, say, a glass cylinder, and you can see through it and see the back edge, you see a much larger oval than you see up here. So I'm going to come across and make my line. Now when I was up here, that was about a quarter inch, so it's only about a half inch wide. Down here it's going to have to be a lot larger than that. So I'll come along. There's my center point. And from here, let's go. A full oh, half inch higher, maybe, or a little three quarters, just for the heck of it. Okay, now if this was transparent or translucent, as I mentioned, you'd see the whole uh, curve, but all we can see is the front down here because our cylinder is solid. Okay, so there is the bottom. Now, we, when we start talking about shading, there's, we talked uh, about how the light source is coming down this direction. Okay, that means that the top of the, of the cylinder is going to be in light, so it's going to be quite bright. But just like uh, before, you'll notice that there's a spot 
where suddenly there's a big shadow. And since this light source is a little bit to the front, that light source is going to pass by the cylinder a little bit on this side. Now this line defines a shadow that we refer to as a core shadow. And as the light passes it, all of a sudden it's it very, very dark. And so you, you'll notice that the core shadow is one of the darker parts of the cylinder. And then as it comes around, it'll be a little bit lighter, not a lot lighter, but you'll notice it. And then as we get to this far side, once again, the shadow will be dark. Now, an interesting thing happens when we get to the bottom. Even though this core shadow is very, very dark, as it comes down, it gets a little bit lighter. And why is that? Reflective light. The light is bouncing off of the surface of the, that this is on and coming back up. And so even though it's still dark down here, it won't be as dark down here as it is up here. Okay. The other thing about this is this is where the light is passing by the cylinder. So this is where the cast shadow starts. So the cast shadow is going to come right from here. And then it would also be coming from the other side. So it will come out this way. And then there's going to be a curve on it. Of course, markers don't really shade very well, but uh, once again, it'll lighten up a little bit as we get to the, uh, the cylinder, only because there's more light bouncing off of different surfaces. And of course, if you're drawing the different shapes in combination, they're going to be next to each other. They're going to be bouncing off uh, light from different objects. And so that's going to also contribute to the shadows and how where they're light and where they're dark.